And the first thing to even know if you're going to heaven is to recognize that you have a need. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's important for us to realize the exceeding sinfulness of our sinful nature and of the sins that we commit. Sin, John says in 1 John, is the transgression of the law of God. If you break one of the commandments, you've broken all of the commandments. And all of us are guilty. Proverbs 21 says, "...an high look and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin." Uh, Romans 14, 23, "...and he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin." The Bible's full of these definitions. The Bible also says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. So the payment, wages means payment. So when I go to my job, I earn wages. It's called payment. It's the same thing. Well, unfortunately, the wages of sin is death. Our payment for our sin means that one day we'll have to die. And unfortunately, the Bible goes a step further in the book of Revelation. And it says that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And it says that this is the second death. And so one of the reasons that I mention this is because I don't want anybody to have to go through the second death. But I love the next part of Romans 6.23. It says, obviously, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. When Jesus Christ came to this earth, the Bible says that he was God manifest in the flesh. He was basically God with skin on. That was his mission. That was why he came to earth was to die for the sins of man. He was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. And he came and fulfilled that mission and went to the cross. The Bible says that while he was on that cross that he himself bare our sins in his own body. So every sin I've ever done and every sin that anybody else has ever done was put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So to be saved from that, Paul tells the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all he said. He didn't say you had to, you had to become a religious person. He said, believe. And that's what people today, there's still the same message. What must I do to be saved from the penalty of my sin? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Again, it's by placing our faith in what Christ did on the cross to pay for our sin debt that gets us into heaven. It was done. My salvation was, was bought. It was purchased. And Christ is alive today. I don't, I don't uh, believe in and, and serve a martyr because he died, he was buried, but he rose the third day. He's alive. He showed himself alive by many infallible proofs, the Bible says. And then he ascended back into heaven. And when he ascended, the angel said that he's going to come again the same way. So when you're saved, you believe in a living Savior who is on his way back as he promised. He's coming again. You're given a gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. When you get a gift from a father, from a son, from an aunt or uncle, they give you the gift. There's nothing tied to that gift. It's free. All you have to do is receive that gift. That's what God gave us through Jesus. The Bible says that the moment that you trust Christ and put your faith in Him, that you're saved and you're sealed and you're kept by His power to the day of redemption. He also says that there's nothing you can do to lose your salvation. If you want something, if you want a gift, typically you would ask for it. If you'd like to repeat this prayer after me and receive that gift from Christ and just make sure that you're saved by asking Him to save you, I'd be more than glad to lead you in a prayer. I would pray something like this. 